Welcome to Fitness, Pittsburgh's only fitness television show. I'm your host, Mike Lee, along with my gorgeous co-host, Valerie Gatto. Hey, Valerie. Hey, Mike, you're sweet. Thanks, I'm sweet. Thanks for joining us for our very first episode. Our goal is to provide you information and healthy choices to help you live smarter and be healthier. That's right. Each week, Mike and I will sit down with various experts in the world of health and wellness and discuss various and interesting groundbreaking topics in the world of fitness and health. As well as inspirational stories from viewers like you. And of course, we'll have product reviews, diet and nutrition tips, and exercise techniques with our very own fitness experts. And we'll have a lot of other fun and informative segments, like my quick and healthy recipe, which is my favorite. I love that too. Well, let's get to the show. It's fitness from our studios here at the Legends of Pittsburgh Fitness Center. Youth sports. As parents, we always want to encourage our children to be active and healthy. But what sport is the right sport for your child? Today, we're going to take a closer look at youth soccer. I sat down with Stefan Lundberg of Legends of Pittsburgh Fitness Center to discuss the most popular sport in the world. All right, so we're talking about youth soccer. Tell me what it is that you guys do here at Legends of Pittsburgh. Well, we have a program called SSS Soccer Training. And what that is, it's speed, strength, and skill work. So. Those are the three main facets of the game, honestly the three main facets that make a good athlete. Um, so our, our training sessions focus on, part of it will be speed and agility work, mm -hmm. part of it will be strength training uh, through full body functional movements and athletic movements, and the other part will be ball work with, you know, skill work with the ball. You know, one of the things you notice first when you come to Legends of Pittsburgh is mm -hmm. the turf area that yeah. you have. I, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody else has it. No. Um, like what, what brought you, obviously it's soccer, but mm -hmm. uh, how did this come about? You know, when we uh, were first going to open a place like this, our first thing we thought of was we don't want to be a cookie cutter gym. We don't want to be another franchise that you just, you know what to expect, you know, right. but we wanted something different, you know. Um, so when we first had this layout, this field actually wasn't here um, when we first opened. We, you know, the business plan was we start small and we keep taking different parts of this 28,000 square feet you see in here. We'll get back to the soccer program in a second, but... Mm -hmm. um, Tell our viewers a little bit more about you and your background mm -hmm. and your soccer background uh, specifically. Yeah, so I've been playing ever since I was six, so it's, you know, it's been a long time playing. Um, I graduated from Kiskeria High School. Um, I have the school record there for single season goals, 36, and uh, I was the first All-American to come out of that school. Oh, yeah? Um, and then I went on to play Division One at Duquesne, um, and I was an All-American there as well, and then after that, uh, my path led me to the River Hounds, and I played for them for three years before opening this place. Cool. So, cool. What's, what was it like playing for the River Hounds? It was great, especially um, after they built a new stadium, yeah. you know, downtown, and it, it was it was amazing to play down there. It, you, know, you could see the city, and it's quite a view. So, yeah, it was it was a great experience, and it, it's really helped me with my training of other athletes too. So, well, it sounds like you haven't strayed too far from where you grew up, too. I mean, mm -hmm. have you always been kind of this Western Pennsylvania kid? I have, I have, yeah. It was, um, I always had Duquesne as my, you know, number one place to go for okay. school. And, you know, I wanted to stay local. You know, family is very important to me. So um, it worked out that, you know, I was able to play at Duquesne and stay and play with the Riverhounds. So that was definitely a blessing. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, um, <clears throat> all right, let's get back into the soccer program. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you probably get kids of all varying degrees of experience do, and skill yeah, and everything like that. So how do you mm -hmm. how do you blend those kids all together in, into one school? So depending on the age groups, we have um, middle school and younger, and then we also have the high school and the college kids. So right. if you were 12 years old and you were in the middle school program, um, we basically teach you how to use your body the right way. Most of these kids, they 
coordination is an issue for some of them. They're still getting, you know, growing into their bodies. Right. And an issue for some of them is just basic strength. So um, learning functional movements, like just how to squat, how to jump properly, what are the mechanics of a jump and how that relates to the other different strength movements we're doing. Um, and then in terms of running mechanics, you know, we'll do different stuff with uh, speed and agility, but also build their legs up with prowlers and sleds. Um, okay. So that, that's, that's a place to start and we build from there. So. Right. Yeah. Now, did you grow up having this kind of training when, when, you know, when you were a kid? I mean, you said you started at six, but at what point did it get serious for you? Um, the training, I never had the, the strength training aspect of it. I think that's, that's been more of a new thing in terms of what kids are doing nowadays. But when I was younger, it was just going outside and playing tag and running and jumping and you were doing all those movements anyway. Um, but now it's kind of become a market where, you know, speed and strength is a big part of the game. But um, for me, I would say when I turned 12 is when it really started to ramp up with the traveling and the different teams that I was on. And from there, it just got crazier every year. So. I, uh, I remember playing soccer when I was a kid, and I, I, was, I was pretty bad, actually. Um, and the best part of my Saturdays were the, the orange wedges. Um, <laughs> right? the, the, I remember those, so, you yeah. Know? Yep. <laughs> so um, these days, do you find that, the, that youth soccer is growing, or is it flat? Yeah, it, it is. It is definitely growing. Um, Honestly, though, I don't know if it'll ever be able to compete with the football and you right. know the baseball and that market. Um, but it is growing in its own right, and it's good to see that. And um, even local here, it's it's definitely getting a lot bigger. Because even in terms of Pennsylvania, Western PA has always been, you know, on the lower end of you know having a lot of soccer teams right. and you know a lot of skilled players. So it's good that um, the academies around here are growing, the teams are growing, and. Uh, we're getting a lot more Division One players coming out of Western PA, so it's definitely on the uprise. Again, it's it's hard to say. I don't know if it'll ever compete with you know the footballs and the basketballs, but um, at least you know at least in my lifetime. So yeah, yeah. It's one of those sports too, though, that you know if you're six two, mm. you can play football. Yeah. Six two in soccer ne isn't necessarily a good like it, it, it caters to a different body type, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, and you'll you'll see that um, a lot of the bigger players, especially in the pros. If you were a six-two guy, you're either a target forward or you might be a center back. And you know, right, as, right. As it's, there's always exceptions to the rule, obviously. But um, you'll notice that in a lot of pro games, there's you know there's certain style players that play each position. So yeah. um, I was an outside midfielder, so I was you know I'm short and that's fine. So <laughs> it was my game was right. speed. So how yeah. do you identify for parents um, when a kid has a love for a sport like soccer mm -hmm. and you know, encourage the parents to get them in because it's usually not the kids that are you know, pay their, gonna pay their way and then yeah. go, walk through the door and you know, hopefully they're not driving a car mm -hmm. you know, at age of 12. It's a parent that's gonna bring them in. Yeah. So what do you say to the parents about you know, how to identify those kids and how to, you know, what the next step is to get them in to explore their love for a sport like yeah. soccer? Well, I'll tell them that you know, at the, the team practices they have, they're great, but those are focused on making that team better, which is what it should be. However, these, you're not going to get all the individual skill work that in the touches that you would, you know, outside of that. So right. they need something extra if they want to get to the next level. Um, I had the benefit of having an older brother, my brother Nick, who helps me run all of the classes. So when I was younger, it was always me and him out in the yard, one on one against each other, right. constantly trying to make each other better. Um, but you know, I, I think that's changed. You know, definitely kids like to play on their own, but things have got a lot more serious in terms of the academies and the speed and strength aspect of it. So. I tell them that it, you know, there's basically my selling point for it is what good is a skilled player that lacks speed and strength, and what's good mm -hmm. is a fast player that lacks skill. So it's it's good to have all three facets of that. You know, at some point, kids want to play some sports, mm -hmm. and you have to make some decisions because you can't play everything. Yep. Uh, injuries is a is a huge factor for parents. Mm -hmm. What kind of injuries can parents expect in soccer? Uh, with soccer, the contact that you see is mostly lower body for the most part. So, yeah. you know, people are tackling each other, slide tackling. Um, so you'll see a lot of ankle, a lot of mm -hmm. ankle injuries and some knee injuries. Um, and again, it's a little different than football where, you you know, you'll get tackled up top. So yeah, they, they, sure. I'm, they still have the ankle and the knees, but they obviously concussions are much more prevalent in a sport like football or hockey. However, in soccer, they still occur. Unfortunately, you know, when people go up for headers, their elbows come up mm -hmm. and... Um, you know, contact with the goalie and different things like that. But uh, you tell them it's it's a part of the game. It you know it's a part of any sport and to some degree. So um, it's really a personal thing if they you know if they want to 
if do the benefits outweigh the risks, you know? And sure. um, is it in adding to their enjoyment of life, you know, their quality of life? Is, is it a, an opportunity for them to get a scholarship? So there's a lot of factors that go into, you know, playing sports. And yeah. um, again, that comes down to the family's decision. But um, I haven't had anybody that's been really concerned with their kids getting hurt. Mm -hmm. It's more after the fact, okay, what can we do to rehab this injury? What can we do to prevent it and from happening mm -hmm. again? And, and again, a lot of the full body strengthening exercise we do, a lot of the injury prevention we do, you know, targets that. You know, a lot of training, mm -hmm. especially for kids, you know, yeah. they want to go do other things. They want to play Xbox, yeah. they want to do whatever. Yep. Um, how do you make the training fun for the kids? Uh, a big part of it, even when you're doing the serious stuff, is just making a fun atmosphere, joking around with them and, you know, having different games that they utilize the skills that they just learned. Right. And the kids love scrimmaging, so we usually will try to scrimmage at the end of it, but um, they usually look forward to that more than anything. But uh, again, it's, 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 it's making the workouts fun where they're all together, you know, they, they see they're all working hard, but they can still joke around with each other and, right. and have fun with it. And I think the biggest difference between the training we do and the training they would get at a team or an academy um, is that it's, it's just all about the individual in the sense that I'm not a coach that's evaluating them every single second. They don't have to feel like they're under the microscope when they're here. Mm -hmm. It's just about their own personal progression. So every time they come in, it's them against themselves every single time, you know? Right. And um, I think that's the main difference is that they don't have that same pressure of, okay, I got to make that starting 11. I, you know, I got to impress the coach. They don't have to impress me. I tell them, you know, if you don't do the exercises right, it doesn't make me any less strong. You know, it's, you, right. you know, I try to teach them, to, you know, personal responsibility and work ethic. So, oh. so um, where can they find more information and when do you have these, these, uh, these classes so at school? If, yeah, so if they go to the website, legendsofpittsburghfitness.com, uh, click under classes, they'll find SSS Soccer. Um, and the classes we run Monday through Thursday from 6 to 7 p.m. And they're able to come any f one of those four, all those four days if they want. So. Cool. All right, Stefan, thanks so much for having us today. If you guys want to learn more about youth soccer and what they're doing here at Legends of Pittsburgh, visit legendsofpittsburghfitness.com. There's more coming up on Fitness on Fox. Fitness is brought to you by Family First Chiropractic, helping you achieve your maximum expression of life. Visit familyfirstchiro.net. Fitness is brought to you by Sunnybridge Natural Foods. Cross the bridge to a healthier lifestyle. Visit Sunnybridge Natural. Welcome to Family First Chiropractic, where we've been helping athletes, whole families, and those with special needs in the South Hills reach their maximum expression of life for over 15 years. My name is Dr. Jonas Mary, and I believe that health and wellness is not an activity, it's a lifestyle. As a result, Family First Chiropractic has partnered with Fitness Television to support a healthy lifestyle in our area. For more information on how Family First Chiropractic can help you reach a whole new level of brain and body-based wellness, contact us today and we'll get you on the road to a healthier lifestyle. Sunnybridge Natural Foods is your health food and natural product store. We offer natural, organic, and local foods, produce, meat, special diet items, and quality supplements. All items baked in our dedicated gluten-free bakery are made fresh, in-house daily, from scratch. Join us in our cafe where your lunch and organic juices are made to order. Hi, I'm Gina. We welcome you to cross the bridge to a healthier lifestyle here at Sunnybridge Natural Foods. Fitness is brought to you by Family First Chiropractic, helping you achieve your maximum expression of life. Visit familyfirstchiro.net. I'm Valerie Gatto. I hope you're enjoying our first episode of Fitness. If you're anything like me, you know it's not easy to eat healthy all the time. So join us here every week at Sunny Bridge Natural Foods, where I'll talk with the in-store chef Karen about healthy options and we'll highlight a quick and healthy recipe.
Welcome to our very first quick and healthy recipe segment. I'm here with Karen, the in-store chef at Sunnybridge Natural Foods. Karen, what do you have for us today? What I have today is some Korean-style steak lettuce leaves. Tell me about what is in the, the marinade. Uh, the marinade is a brown sugar and a soy and has fresh lime juice. Okay, sounds tasty already. Now the steak, is it from a local farm? Yes, it is. It's from a Logan's Farm in Irwin, Pennsylvania. Okay, right up the street. Yes, and they dry age all their products um, for extended periods of time. More flavor. More flavor and more tenderness. Great. So, now the vegetables in here, can you pick and choose or is it just what's in here you should only use? No, you can be as creative as you want. What I chose was cucumber, cherry tomatoes, and onion, but you can use anything. You could use zucchini, you could use any kind of pepper. Um, in the summer, people have uh, a lot of eggplant, zucchini, things like that that they can use up. So if you want to be heart healthy and conscious, you can use avocado, garlic, you can throw that in the mix. Uh, now, how long did it take you to make this? It smells delicious. Well, the steak was actually pre-sliced. Okay, so it's time. very nice, yes. And I just cut them into thinner slices. So if any of you are very busy or you have kids running around like crazy, get the pre-sliced steak and it'll cut your time in half. Yep, and then the vegetables can be limitless. You can just choose whatever you have in your refrigerator. Now I want to try it. Can we do it? I've never made a lettuce wrap. So okay, well, let's first give time it a for shot. everything. Okay, show um, me. What we have here is bib lettuce and also leaf lettuce. Bib lettuce is traditionally used for wraps. Okay, but they so you can change it up a little yes, bit. Yes, you can. So what do I do? Just grab some of this. Yep, you can fill it up as much as you want if you want more lettuce. Get the steak for protein, veggies for vitamins and minerals. Okay, now I taste it. Uh, I don't think it's quite a lettuce wrap, but... Mmm! I need a napkin, but... <laughs> we don't have This is delicious. Right <laughs> so you know the food's not fake. It's healthy, it's delicious. It took you, you know, the time it would take you to get to a drive-thru and eat your food. So, thank you for being here with us today. And Karen at Sunnybridge Natural Foods. Let me chew my food. Hey, thanks for tuning in today for our first episode of Fitness. I hope it's been motivating and you guys are really learning a lot from the show. Right now, I want to introduce to you what we call the fitness training tip. Each week, I'll be showing you some of my favorite exercises to do in the gym. Not only will I be showcasing them, but I'll also demonstrate it for you so you can see the correct form. So you made the first step, you got to the gym. That's great, but now what do you do? Sometimes gyms can be very confusing and intimidating with all the weight and the equipment around. Your time is precious. Why would you wanna walk in the gym without a plan, not really know what you're doing, and it can be embarrassing doing things in front of people the wrong way. Worst of all, you can get hurt by doing the machines improperly. Join me, Dallas Kalushian, as I take you through some of my favorite exercises to do in the gym on my fitness training tip. All right, guys, we're here at our home gym, Legends of Pittsburgh, where I'm gonna be filming all of my fitness training tips. So today, like I told you, the first one we're gonna be doing is one of my favorite ones to do for glutes, hamstrings, abdominals, and even a little bit of cardio in there. The kneeling squat with the prisoner lunge. And for this, I'm using the cable machine, as you can see today. What I first like to do is make sure you have something really sturdy and comfortable, such as a yoga mat, or even one like this that's a little bit thicker. And you wanna use a mat no matter what. Even if you're a beginner, you don't have to start with doing these on the cable machine. You can start them from home. Just make sure you have something to protect your knees. So the first thing that you wanna do is make sure you get in place to where the bar is racked with your height. You wanna be able to get underneath it really easily. Scoot your knees up forward. 
look straight ahead, get your bar rested on your shoulders, nice and sturdy, and then you can proceed to lift upward and release the bar. And then you wanna make sure you want to squat down to where your glutes meet your calves and then drive all of your energy back up in to the squat. After that, we go into the prisoner lunge. Right foot up first, pushing you up into the left, standing up, and then you repeat it. Go back down on the right leg and go back and squat again. One of the most important parts of this exercise is making sure you use the right launch leg and rotate, or you can do five on each leg. Either way you prefer. This is one of my favorite leg exercises to do because you really get to hit squats and lunges, which are two of the most important exercises to do when you're really trying to build the glutes, legs, or even work on the core and a little bit of cardio like I mentioned. If you wanna do these pretty frequently every week or every other week, just make sure that you change things up so that your muscles still stay confused. You can do that by adding more repetitions, doing things really slow so you feel the burn more, and also adding different weight. If you guys have any more questions on this training tip or you want to see more, check out my website, dallaskfitness.com. All right, that's it for this week's fitness training tip. Make sure you try this one next time you're at the gym. And guys, it's also for you because women love guys that don't skip leg day. Take the work out of your workout, the Hawaii chair. So the Hawaii chair debuted in 2007 by a company called Perfect USA. Not so perfect, they're out of business today. The Hawaii chair retailed for the low, low price of $350. No joke. This motor rotates your in, in a circle. So it supposedly, I guess, the claim is that it works your abs. It works, it works your abs because you're laughing your ass off. That's what it does. I mean, seriously. It's, yeah, worst product ever. What, is, what does that chair have to do with Hawaii anyway? I just want to ask her, like, I mean, how do you get all that typing done at work, Tamara? You're thrusting so hard in that chair. <laughs> that's so distracting. It's just, that's just weird. How do you, what is that for? What is that? I love this woman. I love this woman. Like, what the hell is she doing? Why are her hands up? Is there a lot of earthquakes in Hawaii or something and they got that idea from that? <laughs> look, I mean, I don't care how long you sit in that Hawaii chair, you're not gonna get abs. You're not gonna look like a Hawaiian girl, <laughs> whatever the goal is. The Hawaiian chair, who, who created that? I, I, I don't know what, what that's for, but if you made money from that, well, it's America, you can make money from anything. So kudos to you, Hawaiian chair man. This solves the age-old question, if you ever wanted to combine office work with hula hooping, here's your answer. That product is very ridiculous. It just, I, would, I can't even imagine walking into an office, seeing somebody sitting in that, just twirling around. I mean, it's a joke. <laughs> Honestly, for a good laugh, I would recommend the Hawaiian chair. Or if you want to learn how to, how do you say it? Hula? Hula something, hula hoop. Or if you don't have any hip movement, want to teach someone how to move their hips, maybe. I can do that. Hit me up, I'll teach you how to hula. Move them hips. Hi, welcome to this week's Healthy Skin Tip brought to you by the Skin Center. Today I'd like to talk to you about the effects of the cold weather and your skin. During the cold winter months, especially in this area, the skin can become very dry and itchy. So you want to be sure to be dressing in layers, 
wearing a hat, warm gloves, and a scarf, just like your mother used to tell you to do. Here are some additional tips to help keep the skin healthy and smooth. Exfoliation is key. Moisturizers will not work to their full potential if you don't exfoliate on a regular basis. Shorten your showers to less than 10 minutes and be careful of the temperature of the water as hot water can strip your skin of its natural oils. Avoid dry soaps by using a mild soap or a body wash that has moisturizers in it. When drying the skin, pat the skin dry, don't rub, and try to apply your moisturizer while the skin is still damp. I recommend a lotion that has lactic acid in it. Lactic acid is one of the alpha hydroxy acids that actually exfoliates the skin. Lactic acid is also a super hydrator, so you're getting a combination of exfoliation and hydration in the same lotion. When choosing a moisturizer, try to find one that has hyaluronic acid in it. Hyaluronic acid is a water binding agent that actually holds water in the skin. That's it for this week's Healthy Skin Tip brought to you by The Skin Center. If you have a skin question that you'd like us to answer, send us an email or contact The Skin Center for more information. So at the end of every episode, we wanna take some time for you and make sure that we're answering any kind of fitness questions that you may have. So my first letter today, I'm gonna to read to you. Dear Dallas, I've been working out since the new year and I'm getting frustrated. I'm not seeing the results I want. How can I get great legs like yours? I work full time and it's hard for me to get in the gym every day. Please help, thanks in advance, Nikki from Upper St. Clair. So first off, I wanna congratulate you for working out since the new year because honestly, building muscle and getting in shape definitely takes consistency and dedication. So you're doing a good job there, stick with it. One thing I can recommend for you, whether you're in the gym two days a week or you're at your house, you can use things like your couch and chairs to even get a better result from step ups. We can do squats at home, lunges, and deadlifts. You can invest in about you know, 10 to 15 pound dumbbells to help you get through that if you can't get to the gym. And secondly, nutrition is definitely key in this process because when you're gonna go to the gym, you're gonna break down your muscles and we wanna repair it with the right amount of sleep and of course nutrition. So I always make sure I get the right amount of protein and carbs before and after the gym. That way I have a nice full look and I get the results I want. So these are some general tips that should put you on the right path. However, if you're not getting the maximum results you want, you can contact me and I can design a customized training plan for you through DallasKFitness.com. Well, I hope you enjoyed our first episode of fitness. We did it. We're done. We're done. I'm sore from the first episode. I don't know what you did. I didn't see you in the gym. Yeah, well. For more information, visit us at fitnesstv.com. For Valerie, I'm Mike Lee here at Legends of Pittsburgh Fitness Center. We thank you for watching our very first episode of Fitness, and we'll see you next week.